the last concentration unit we're going to talk about here is molarity. Um, so molarity is probably the most commonly used um, concentration unit when it comes to like pure chemistry. Um, the other concentration units we talked about before, the weight volume percent or volume volume percent or part per million, um, those are have kind of specific usages in like uh, medical situations or like toxicology, um, public health type arenas. Uh, molarity is more of a strictly a chemistry unit, so we're going to talk about it here even though for a lot of you and stuff that you do in the future, you probably won't see molarity a whole lot. Um, so molarity is simply defined as moles per liter. So it's abbreviated with this capital M. So if you see this capital M, that means molarity. And molarity is moles per liter. So again, anytime you have something per something like this, um, that means you have a conversion factor, which means if you know the number of moles of something and the molarity, you can figure out the liters. If you know the volume of something um, and you know the molarity, you can figure out how many moles you have. So what we're going to do now is kind of look at some problems with molarity and see how this is used. Um, so here's an example. Calculate the molarity of a solution containing 20 grams in 250 milliliters of solution. So again, molarity, we have to remember, is moles per liter. So we need moles and we need liters we have 20 grams of NaOH. So that's not moles, but we know we can go from grams to moles using the formula weight. So we can go to a periodic table and figure out the formula weight of sodium hydroxide, NaOH. You look that up on the periodic table. Sodium is 22.99. Oxygen is 16. Hydrogen is 1.01. .01. That adds up to 40.0 grams per mole. So because we know um, formula weight, right, anytime we know grams, we can figure out moles. So we're going to need that in this problem. And then, again, for molarity, we need liters. Well, over here, we don't have um, liters, but we have milliliters. So what we're going to be able to do here for milliliters is take 250 milliliters and go from milliliters over to liters. So we have to do a couple um, other conversions before we can calculate the molarity. So first off, let's calculate the moles. So if we have 20.0 grams of NaOH, we know we can go from grams to moles using the formula weight, so we're going to do grams of NaOH on the bottom, moles of NaOH up top, and we know that there are 40.0 grams per one mole, so that's going to add up to 0 0.500 moles of NaOH. So grams cancels with grams, it leaves us an answer that's in moles. All right, so the next part is going to be, right, so let's go like this. So that will be our moles, all right? Next part is to figure out the liters. Well, we don't have liters, but we have milliliters. So 250 milliliters, and we know we can go from milliliters to liters, our metric um, conversions. We know that there's 1,000 milliliters in one liter. Uh, so milliliters is going to cancel out, and our answer is going to be 0 0.250 liters. And now we have an answer in liters, and that's going to be able to go down there. So now to calculate the molarity, molarity is equal to moles per liter, so 0 0.500 moles divided by 0 0.250 liters is going to be 2.0 molar, capital M. Um, two significant figures here because on the 250 number there, that's only two significant figures. All right, so that's our final answer, 2.0 molar NaOH. All right, so again, a lot of um, conversions here, um, understanding the definitions, and kind of one of the big tricks to this problem, I think, is being able to come up with this conversion, which, again, you would need the periodic table to go from to figure out the, the 
the molar mass of NaOH. So, right, the formula weight or the molar mass are the same thing. Okay, next problem here. What is the molarity of a solution prepared by dissolving 10 grams of sodium bicarbonate in 3.3 liters of water? So again, molarity is going to be moles per liter. So we're given grams. So again, we don't um, we can't use grams in calculating molarity. We have to convert that to moles. In this case, the molar mass is given to us. So we're going to do that conversion. So let's start with that conversion. 10.0 grams of sodium bicarbonate, NaHCO3, times. So we know we want to get rid of grams. We want to convert it to moles. We know that we have 84 grams per one mole, right? That's based on this number here that was given to us. So now we can do 10 divided by 84, and that's going to give us... 0. Point, and I'll do this in three significant figures, so it's 0. 0.119 moles of NaHCO3. So 0. 0.119 moles of sodium uh, bicarbonate. So just to grams cancels with grams. Now we have moles of sodium bicarbonate. Um, to finish the problem, right, molarity is moles per liter. Well, we have 0.119 moles of sodium bicarbonate, and the problem gave us a value in liters this time, so there's no extra conversion necessary. So if we take 0.119 and divide it by 3.3, we're going to get 0 0.036 molar Na. HCO3. And that would be your final answer. Again, this time we're going to go to two significant figures because of the volume there. All right, so again, molarity is moles per liter. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, molarity can be a conversion factor to help you convert things um, back and forth. So you can figure out the moles, you can figure out a volume, uh, depending on uh, what is given to you in a problem. So I don't like trying to tell you to memorize these equations. I mean, you can remember that moles is equal to molarity times volume, or you could remember that volume is going to be the moles divided by the molarity. To me, it's much easier just to use the molarity as a conversion factor and cancel out units. But these equations are going to be what happens whenever you do that dimensional analysis. So here's an example. So what volume um, of a... 0 0.30 molar solution of glucose contains 0 0.025 moles of glucose. So what I always recommend is whenever you have a problem like this that is um, where something is given to you in, with a molarity like that, like 0 0.30 with a capital M, remember that molarity is moles per liter and rewrite that as 0 0.30 moles per liter. And by rewriting it, that might help you remember that you have a conversion factor, right? So now if you have moles like we do here, right, we can figure out the liters, which is what we need. Now, it says here we want a volume in milliliters. So we're going to have to do a conversion at the end. And once we get to liters, we're going to convert it to milliliters. So we're just going to do that one extra step at the end. Um, so whenever you're doing the dimensional analysis, you never start with your conversion factor. You're always going to start with your number that's all by itself. So we're going to go 0 0.025 moles of glucose. And now we want to convert that to volume, in this case liters. And we know that we have 0 0.30 moles of glucose per every one liter. So that means in terms of the number of liters we have, it's going to be 0 0.025 divided by 0 0.3. So it's going to be 0 0.083. And I'm going to go with two significant figures, right? Both of our numbers up top here have two significant figures. That one and this one over here. Both of them have two significant figures. So 0 0.083 liters. Remember that we have canceled out uh, moles of glucose, 
So we're left with liters. Now, to solve the problem for volume in milliliters, we have to convert the 0 0.083 liters to milliliters. So we want to go from liters to milliliters. We know that there's 1,000 milliliters in one liter. Our liters cancel out. And then we're going to have an answer that is 83 milliliters. So our final answer here would be 83 milliliters um, is necessary. All right. So more similar type problems with molarity. Uh, we can figure out the number of grams that are present. Uh, if you're following the picture down here, it says if you're given a volume of solution, we can figure out how many grams of solute are in there. And we do that by going from the volume to the number of moles, and we do that conversion using the molarity. And then once we have the number of moles, we can convert to grams by doing another conversion using the molar mass. So again, all of these conversions are important here. Um, knowing their definitions and being able to use them as conversion factors basically to change between units. So let's take a look at an example of a problem like this. So how many grams of sodium chloride are in 25 milliliters of a 2.0 molar sodium chloride solution? So another way to say this question is if you were going to make a 2.0 molar um, sodium chloride solution and you wanted to make 25 milliliters of it, how many grams of sodium chloride would you have to add? All right, well, let's figure this out. So first thing we're going to do, we notice we have this 2.0 molar here, and we're going to rewrite that as 2.0 moles per liter, right? Because remember, molarity is that conversion factor that allows us to convert between moles and liters. Next thing we notice, the only other number that's really given to us in the problem here is this 25 milliliters. We're also given the conversion factor for the uh, molar mass of sodium chloride, which is given over here. Right, that's going to be another conversion. The only straight number that we're given is this 25 milliliters. So let's start with the 25 milliliters. 25 milliliters. And we want to convert that. Well, we know we can go from milliliters to liters. And the reason we want to go to liters first is we want to get to moles. We want to know how much sodium chloride is there. Well, moles is kind of like an amount. It tells us how many actual sodium chlorides there are. But in order to go to moles, we need, if we know liters, we can figure out moles. Well, our initial va value here is in milliliters. So what we want to do is we want to say that there's 1,000 milliliters per one liter. And then we're going to cancel out our units. And then I'm just going to go ahead and do the next conversion right next to it. Once you have it in liters, and if you type it in on your calculator, it would be 0 0.025 liters. Then we can go ahead and convert this to moles because we can say that there's 2.0 moles of NaCl per every one liter. So now in this case, our liters cancel, and we're going to be left with how many moles of sodium chloride we have. So in this case, it's going to be 0 0.050 moles of sodium chloride. Right, so that tells us we need to have 0 0.050 moles of sodium chloride present. But we need to know, like, you can't go to a, a scale and weigh out moles. It weighs out grams. So how are we going to go from moles to grams? We have to do one more conversion. And that's going to involve what we learned in Chapter 5, with the formula weight, or the molar mass. So 0 0.050 moles of sodium chloride times, we have 58.44 grams per one mole. This cancels out, moles cancels out with moles, and we're going to be left with um, 0 0.05 times 58.44, which is going to equal, oh, write it in red, um, 2.9 grams of sodium chloride. And that would be your final answer. Um, 
So again, two consecutive conversions here, really three if you count going from milliliters uh, to liters. Um, but all these conversions have everything to do with kind of these conversion factors, molarity, molar mass, and then the other one that we did was the metric conversion. So again, you have to take whatever it is is given to you. In this case, what's given to you is this 25 milliliters. That's what you're going to have to start with because everything else that you're given is a conversion factor. Start with that one solo number that you're given and then start converting it. If you were to look at this, right, this is a volume. Over here in the 58.44, there's no volume there, right? So we know we cannot use that as our first step. This one, though, it does have a volume. So in terms of logically laying it out, you have to look at the units that you're, you start with. In this case, we're starting with milliliters, which is a volume. So our first conversion has to be something that can convert volume to something else. So in this case, we're going to okay, we're going to get out of volume and we're going to convert it to moles. Well, that's good because once we have moles here, then we can go from moles to grams using this other one, and that's exactly what we did.